Hi everyone, welcome back to another interview series. My name is Maher from Newfoundland, Canada. And today I have the privilege to interview Dr. Dennis Rebello from Rhode Island, USA. Hi, Dr. Dennis, how are you doing? Hi, Maher, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for being here. So you are a professor, CEO, advisor, keynote speaker, and author of the story like you mean it. So my first question for you is the importance of storytelling for job seekers, especially during the interviews where they will be asked behavioral questions or tell me about a time and give an example. So as the author of story like you mean it, do you have any tips for job seekers in terms of storytelling so that they can be memorable? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the most compelling problems today is that we tend to be mentored informally by poor storytelling or, or poor uh, rhetoric, right? The spoken word. So when we hear people introduce themselves or answer key questions where the stakes are really high, we tend to actually model behavior that didn't do it that well. Mm -hmm. So storytelling, uh, as you rightly point out, is a, is a great vehicle for communicating who you are. So when somebody says, tell me about yourself in here, with the, with, you don't want them to, uh, of course, say, um, if, you're, if you're the person being asked the question, they're actually giving you, let me, let, me, let me pause for a moment. They're actually giving you an opportunity to provide your image of yourself through a personalized story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't prepare for that, Mahir, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, how is this that we're so poor at it? So first, I want to acknowledge that we're poor at it. We have to stop being uh, not so good at it. Mm -hmm. We have to honor this opening, this window, this door, and we have to start preparing so that we step in the box, the batter's box, so to speak, that we're ready to, to play ball, right? Mm -hmm. So now, what do job seekers do? Well, first, they must consider what elements of their life aren't uh, in really representative of them on their resume. Mm -hmm. So when you think about that, right? You, you know, it, look, at, we're, we're really good at spotting other people's stories, yes. right? And the good elements of their stories. So why not do it for our own stories? Why not survey our own life and make some connections that might not be so obvious? Yes. So the book, Story Like You Mean It, is really designed to be not just a book, but a book and a manual so that for job seekers, and I've been on the uh, Zoom with a couple uh, today, uh, I saw several people today, actually, three, if I count one that is about to go in transition, mm -hmm. where they had to map their story for some pretty high stakes, either networking or direct interviews. So when I can go back in time and explain who I am based on who I was relative to who I am now en route to who I will become or likely become, I can show my value and worth over time. And that's why storytelling is so important. You mentioned that you, a job seeker should be prepared. Is it like writing their stories or practicing it? Or what do you mean by being prepared? Yeah, it's both. So, but to write your story, you have to acknowledge different, you know, in the book, you know, I talk about formative experiences and I call them blue dots. So mm -hmm. moments that really started to uh, influence you as a human being. So for me, it was bicycle motocross riding. It was like being a BMX kid. I was a little underweight. I used to ride my bike and try to beat kids who were the same age as me, but they were stronger. They were bigger than me. I was a little bit of a late bloomer. So when, when I go back in time and I, and I am able to articulate why I like bicycle motocross and how I was able to be analytical and creative to beat people bigger and stronger than me, it showcases some of my desire to be a little bit of a, a front runner in exploration. So it shows off a lot of my, my skills. But if I just said that, it would be out of place. So you have to first identify moments to connect, mm -hmm. let's say, BMX riding to science fair work when I was, you know, and being a scientist, a hard scientist at mm -hmm. heart for a while, to then being somebody who was a crossover teacher who taught people uh, different methodologies for communicating because I, I, I'm convinced, by the way, Meher, that my I was good at winning science fairs because I was good at teaching yeah. right people older than me what I did and how it was actually effective. So the spoken word during key moments is something that we don't practice because I don't think we know where to get and cultivate our own content. In in you know so much we, we hear in omni-channel marketing, you know Instagram, online marketing, whatever yeah. it might be, right? We hear oh look at. Uh, you know, uh, let's talk about content cultivation. 
Yes. How about cultivating content from our own life, right? How about mm -hmm. having some that added reflection so we can think about the dots in our life and how they can, mm -hmm. when we can do that over time, we have what's called a coherent theme, right? Yeah. The person understands who we are. We animate a sense of who we are. And it bec there becomes more stickiness to us as a speaker because I'm lighting up the motor mm -hmm. and sensory yeah. cortex of someone's brain. And now this image of me as a BMX rider, you can't get out of your head, yeah. right? Because I decided, I decided to share it. But of course, it has to be done in a relevant way. So first identify moments that are significant that might not be obviously related to your, your work, but then you draw that connection in and that connection then starts to create interest and pull. And then you're able to animate who you are, really important. And then you practice that performance after you write it out and you listen to yourself. So a lot of people don't actually use the recording uh, function, the yeah. audio recording on their phone. It's like, you know, what a great opportunity to hear how you sound, your voice, your pace, your breathing. Mm -hmm. All these things impact how people perceive you as either confident or not confident mm -hmm. as, a, as a storyteller. And look, at let's face it. You don't have a lot of time in an interview. Yes. Right? They've already looked at your resume, your background, your, your education. Your job now is to fill the gaps in quickly, but not defensively. Yeah. Right. And you, so you, make sure, you have to make sure that your resume is becoming alive by giving examples, whatever you mentioned that. Look, anybody can read the resume and how you talk. You don't use it. Reading off your resume in an interview is akin to reading the PowerPoint that you presented. We all know that you don't read the words off your PowerPoint. Yes. You put visuals and you, you're supposed to bring the words out yes. through your, your performance of a, of a PowerPoint presentation. It's the same thing in an interview, yeah. really. It really is. Those are great tips. Thank you very much, Dr. Dennis. So for the audience watching or listening for the first time, I'm going to ask Dr. Dennis a couple of questions which I'm going to post them on a daily basis. So you'll be with us on a journey. You can like every videos, you can share them, make comments. So tune in next time for another great question with Dr. Dennis.